so y'all another day another video so i found i don't know something just I'm, I'm good for joining groups on facebook and stuff like support groups or whatever the case is and um so something just dawned on me like i wonder if they have support groups for eloquence <laughs> and they do like several so i joined a couple and um you know, I like put out the different symptoms I've been having and you know, just my story or whatever. And coming to find out, there are a lot of people going through the same thing I go through. And just like with me, they talk to the hematologist or the cardiologist or whoever. And you know, doctors have a bad habit of trying to make you think like you're bugging, you know. Like you don't know, you don't know how your body was before a medication versus, you know, during or after. Sorry, that was the pothole. And so, and also I started, I haven't looked at the side effects, like the official side effects in a long time. And so I revisited that and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, man. So some of the side effects of Illiquis, if you do not know, is, um, you know, bleeding. That goes without saying because it's a blood thinner. And so um, that was actually one of the reasons I ended up having to get, I don't know if I could say. Well, yeah, that's one of the reasons I had to end up getting a hysterectomy because my uterus was shot to death because of the fibroids and everything. But with me having to take 10 milligrams of Eliquis a day, when I would get my menses, it would just be so incredibly heavy. This is annoying. It would be so incredibly heavy and I was just losing far too much blood. And so, you know, I had all the issues that I've talked about in other videos. videos. And so, um, I mean, it goes without saying you're going to bleed you know extra sometimes as a woman but you know as a guy it can cause bleeding also and so um let me say to you they don't really tell you when they prescribe things for you the doctor or whatever and with Illiquis they send like a specialist into you know to talk to you at least with me I was um prescribed Eliquis when I was in a hospital and so they they made you know kind of gloss over what the side effects are but they don't really get it through your head that okay this could be really dangerous for you because the point is to get you to take this medication and of course you're in a state where whether it's for AFib, whatever it's for, stroke, blood clots, like I have blood clots. Um, <laughs> this thing, I have blood clots. So you're in a state of mind where you're so, like, you know, frantic, and you're like, wait, I can't die, <laughs> you know? Wait, I got things to do, I got kids, I don't have things set up. Whatever the case is, they just tell you, take this. Now I will say, it's not like I really trust doctors like that. <laughs> Because even though I'm in a profession, I don't, you know, as I've said in the past, I think um, modern medicine has its place, but it's not, to me or for me, it's not like primary. Um, it's not primary treatment or anything. Only when, <laughs> whoo, this is annoying. <laughs> only when you know i think is necessary that you know i'll go on ahead and try it out but so yeah and i <laughs> this is annoying <sighs> so um so all right so you got the bleeding and stuff like that and you're supposed to you know tell your doctor if you're having a bunch of bleeding or whatever but then there are other things like it, it can cause blood clots not from stopping it from freaking taking it okay like isn't this doesn't this kind of defeat the purpose what's up y'all i gotta get on over here 
so it can cause blood clots <laughs> this is a sucky video it can cause blood clots it also um, causes liver failure kidney failure um, what else? stroke <laughs> um, just like all these crazy other issues so it's like they come up with these medications that make you feel like oh it's the only way or like you have to take it but um, it has all these other issues which again I already knew but under the circumstances with me having a genetic blood disorder which I still question first of all secondly it didn't bother me for 46 years like is it really that dire but um you know I got on this daggone thing but the kicker is you can't just stop it and I mean it's like that with you know probably most medications because you're dealing with chemicals they're not natural you know um, concoctions or natural um, like compounds what have you so that's the problem because if you stop it all these things can happen so it ain't like I could just like, ah, screw this toss them out because I just started taking it mm -hmm. now here's the issue with that for me is I've spoken maybe I've said this in another video before but my hematologist she you know is nice and cordial enough until I start asking questions then she seems annoyed even um she insists that one of the reasons I need to keep taking this aside from me just having this factor 5 lighted um, disorder is that I got blood clots twice I was there when the x-ray when the MRI was done they couldn't even figure out at the hospital if they if what they saw were blood clots or um, like um, an electasis or whatever so I ended up my PCP was on vacation as usual and so I had to see one of her partners who was a doctor he's so dope I like him but he not us not knowing any with him not me not knowing anything about the hematologist because when I told her she got I get to that in a minute so when I went to him and I told him what they said at the hospital because they ended up having a car radiology to see like you know what's going on here and they said it um it wasn't blood clots so when I was in his office and he was just looking over all my information because you know he was just filling in for my PCP he was like no they're not blood clots I think radiology said no but the doctor the doctor and ER said yes or something like that because he looked at it he was like no that's not those are not blood clots those are like nodules from like scar tissue basically from the clots that were there and so he like you know like look see and he was like pointing the stuff on the x-ray and everything I'm not a physician I do not read x-rays but he's an actual specialist so I was like well okay if you're saying they're not clots so I said to her you know well doctor I don't want to say his name on camera but that that doctor said no and she was like highly upset and then there was a time before that when I saw her and she told me that I had clots twice and I said nobody told me that she's like yes I did yes I did tell you that kind of like uh, like she want to argue like are you a professional up in here or what? So anyway, um, I bring her up to say she won't even entertain the idea of me getting off eloquence. I even said to her, like, well, can we, like, cut it down? Because, I mean, 10 milligrams a day is a lot just to basically use as a prophylactic. She don't even want to do that. And so, as I've already mentioned Eloquence is a bad mother. So I can't just, I don't trust myself to wean myself off. You know what I mean? Because it's too much at risk. 
so I'd rather do it with someone who is familiar, who has, um, you know, how do you say, like, studied, so to say, with dozens and dozens of patients, if not hundreds of patients, so we can work together on getting me off this ish. But it's like, and what I find from the support group that I've been dealing with, dialing in is that they often have the same problem and you know we all know that doctors can be like real narcissistic almost in that way where it's like I know it's best for you you don't know what's best for you and although I'm a nurse I've definitely um, been dealing with that in these past few years where I've been dealing with these health issues like they really act like you don't know what the hell you're talking about even when it comes to pain and that could be because I'm like black woman too but I've even had issues with pain and I have a high tolerance for pain normally and I'm not saying that's some damn bad either <laughs> but um, I remember when I first had the clots I think it was the clots when I went in with the clots it could have been like the following week I got pneumonia so but I think it was with the clots I was in excruciating pain. No, it had to be the class. I was in excruciating pain. And um, nothing they gave me would work. I'm the type of person, I don't deal with um, narcs. I don't even deal with, um, like, cinnamon, Tylenol. Unless I absolutely have to. So I don't like taking medications of any kind. Um, unless it's absolutely necessary. These jokers, I was like, first I was trying to, like, thug it out. <laughs> I'm like, I need these up. So like the tramadol wouldn't work, the oxycodone wouldn't work, the um, morphine wouldn't work. It was really bad. And so um, finally they came up, um, I always forget the name of this medication because I haven't taken it in a couple of years. And also when they gave this to me, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna have to look at my um, stuff at home. But even with this medication, it's like um, ibuprofen on crack. So you actually can't take it a lot. You can't take it more than five days or it shuts your liver down. And so, um, like they were gonna send me home. I was like crying. I was like banging on the table. It was just horrible. And they're standing there looking at me and they're like, well, you know, like they still wanna send me home and stuff. And I swear to God, I promise you, it wasn't until we started talking and I said to them, I said I'm native. Because sometimes, it depends on who I'm dealing with, I go through the whole rigmarole of my, you know, ethnicity, ethnicities. But sometimes I was just like, sometimes I just sound black, sometimes I sound Afro native, sometimes I'll say, you know, native sometimes i'll say afro um afro caribbean or whatever you know what i'm saying because it's all true i'm all of this <laughs> and most people they just look at your skin tone and then they think they got you pegged or whatever um like up here where i where i live they'll think i'm like mixed they'll think i'm either arab because they don't know nothing about nothing else no egyptian nothing Pakistan, you know, so they'll just think I'm, here we go, that's the big turn, they'll just think I'm Arab, or they think I'm mixed, because there are a lot of mixed people up here, and mixed to them means you have one white parent, one black parent, well, of course, I'm not mixed, <laughs> but, you know, they don't have any, like, in-betweens, <laughs> and so, it wasn't, God darn it, I'm about to cuss, <laughs> So it wasn't until we were talking and um, I said I was native. Them, them old folks still put me down on the um, chart as white. But <laughs> God, dog, stop moving. So um, it wasn't until after I told them that I was native. And then one of the nurses that was standing there with me, she was like, oh, I'm native too. And, you know, of course, she just looked like a regular white chick but she's like I'm native too like her people are um Navajo 
I don't know how she wound up in Central Pennsylvania, but she did. <laughs> and so it wasn't until then that them mm -hmm, went and got me something for my pain. And then they let me stay like another night or two. Cause I was like, yo, I can't go home. I, I was just devastated because I'd never been sick before. And um, so it was just like a whole new world to me, having to deal with doctors and stuff. I always have I've always been a um, you know, an herb <laughs> type of chick. <laughs> That's what I do. My natural remedies and things like that. And so, um, yeah, like I said, doctors, they just often, <sighs> damn it, this going to be, I don't even know how to edit all that out, but doctors tend to think they know better than you do about yourself. That pisses me off. I doubt it gets on my nerves with anybody. I always got somebody thinking they know who the freak I am, but, um, all of that being said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to find another hematologist. But before I do that, I got to get some damn insurance. Because you can't even pay. You can't even pay to, um, you know, just pay out of pocket with stuff. Because they don't do that. It's so annoying. I have a friend who recently... Um, he had been out of work because of COVID and all that kind of stuff. So he had to get on um, Medicaid for his prescription for a bit. But so he, you know, got new insurance and everything. But he went to the place to get his prescription. Or no, he went to get like checks. Them mofos told him they don't do Medicaid. So he was like, that's okay. Why well, I have other insurance. After they knew that he had Medicaid too. They would not touch him. He had to leave. He even offered to, he even said he would pay out of pocket. They would have, they would not allow him. So people who are Medicaid, who are thinking that, you know, like, I think they acting funny because I'm on Medicaid, but you feel like you're being silly. Some of the mofos really are acting funny with you because you're on Medicaid, which sucks. God, this system get on my damn nerves.